Am I making this video just to make gay jokes? Maybe. Hi, I'm Jessica and there's nothing straight about me, particularly the two 45 degree curves in my spine, which is what we're going to be talking about today, along with showing you some of my fun x-rays. Occurring in about 3% of people, scoliosis is a medical condition in which a person's spine had a sideways curve. The curve is usually an S shape or a C shape and can involve twists in various dimensions. Girls are typically more severely affected than boys and it most commonly occurs between the ages of 10 and 20. In some people, the degree of the curve is stable, while in others it increases over time depending on the cause of the scoliosis. The degree of scoliosis can be very minor and typically not cause many problems, while severe cases can really interfere with breathing. I find that because I have hypermobile joints, I can actually accidentally make mine worse by just lying on one side for too long or being curved too much, and that can effectively stop my breathing, which is something I now realise I shouldn't smile while saying. But what can I say? I'm full of relentless optimism, painkillers and Diet Coke. During research for this video, I read the line, typically no pain is present, and honestly, I was floored, floored. To show you, here is an x-ray of a normal back. Here is an x-ray of my back. Yeah, that's my spine. Now please, on a chart of one to 10, please just imagine how much that hurts. Holding that number in your head, good. Now times it by four, boom, that's how much my back hurts. But sure, apparently most people aren't in pain, which is nice for them. But ignoring those people, symptoms associated with scoliosis can include pain in the back, shoulders, neck, and buttocks, heart and lung problems, constipation and pain due to the stretching of the stomach, intestines, etc., functional limited mobility, painful menstruation, uneven musculature on one side of the spine, slow nerve action, uneven hips, arms, or leg lengths, and rib prominence or a prominent shoulder blade. Much like my glorious lesbianism, my scoliosis isn't necessarily visible unless you're looking hard enough. I have an S-shaped spine, and I'm very fortunate in that my two curves are about the same degree, which means that my head is pretty much exactly in alignment with my pelvis, even though my spine does some weird stuff in between. So I look straight, which was a problem when I was dating. <laughs> Oh, I'm just gonna keep that going more video. So I look relatively normal, and yes, I'm going to say normal a lot in this video, so yes, that's just happening. I can't use typical, since I have to use that to describe the most common type of scoliosis, and let's be honest, it can only be used against us in a bad way if we let it be. I'm not normal, and that's not a bad thing. Keep watching, and I'll show you some close-up shots in a minute. The cause of most cases of scoliosis is unknown, but is believed to involve a combination of genetic and environmental factors. If you have someone in the family with a scoliosis, you are more likely to get it. It can also occur due to another condition such as muscle spasms, or cerebral palsy, Marfan syndrome, and tumours. Your spine can literally just grow around a tumour, like a river around a rock. Mine is due to my underlying neuromuscular problems, not just being really gay. But whoever saw a straight rainbow? There are two classifications of scoliosis. Structural, in which the spine is in a fixed shape, or functional, in which the spine itself is normal, but it's been pulled into a curve. An estimated 10% of cases are due to a neuromuscular disease, 15% are congenital, and 65% of scoliosis cases are idiopathic, meaning with an unknown cause, or apparent spontaneous origin. I really love it when the medical industry admits they don't know everything, but I also hate it because it would be really useful if they did. Also, top marks do ever just worked out that only added up to 90%. The other 10% are things like the tumours that we mentioned earlier. Congenital scoliosis, congenital by the way means that it is a condition present at birth, can be for a number of reasons to do with the spine's formation during weeks three to six of pregnancy but most other types develop during adolescence. Mine started when I was about 12, I think, as I was getting really, really bad headaches and growing a lot at that time. At whatever age it's first noticed, diagnosis is confirmed with an x-ray because, yeah, it's a curve. Scoliosis associated with known syndromes is subclassified as syndromic scoliosis, and oh boy, are oh, there a lot of them? Yeah. To pick three out of a hat, charcot mary tooth disease, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and spina bifida and I only picked those three because I can actually pronounce them. If you've got one of the other myriad of symptoms that have created scoliosis, please leave me a comment with tips on how to pronounce it, because I... I can't. 
Moving swiftly on, another form of secondary scoliosis is degenerative scoliosis. This is the type that we see most in older people. You'll probably have seen your grandparents or people of their generation shrinking or getting humps on their back as they age. Unless you have those freakishly fit grandparents, of course, who like to hike up mountains at the age of 105 and still robustly debate the ethics of the modern living wage as they do so. Personally, I intend to use my old person privilege for such fun things as no longer being glared at when I sit in the disabled seat on a bus. I have a literal pass that means I am allowed to sit here, Janet. Stop trying to set my head on fire with your eyes. Anyway, that's a de novo scoliosis, which means new, referring to the occurrence of the condition during later life. It's generally because your bones have become weaker and the ligaments and discs located in the spine become worn in a kind of asymmetrical manner. Look after your back now and it will slow down the process. You have been warned. It is too late for me, but you can still save yourself. Is what I'd like to fool you into believing. My mother has had a bad back since I was a really little girl because yes, this connective tissue is inherited. And also, yes, my brother and I were offensively large babies to carry around for nine months. I was nine and a half pounds when I was born and he was ten and a half. That's the same as a large bag of potatoes, a small microwave oven, a six foot aluminium stepladder, a medium sized bowling ball, or two bottles of two litres of Diet Coke. Thank God I'm a lesbian and there's another womb in this marriage. I decided from a young age that I was going to do my utmost to protect my back and, deeply ironically, keep it straight. And we all know how well that turned out. I'd sit up ramrod straight at all times, I wouldn't slouch, I put my shoulders back, and then I developed a scoliosis anyway. I started to get terrible pains in my back, especially my right shoulder blade. The curve at the top is to my right, to the extent that it kind of felt as if someone had taken a boiling hot poker and was attempting to wrench off my shoulder blade. I could feel how taut my organs were as well, especially when I ate, and it just felt like someone was stabbing me repeatedly. The worst thing was going to school, obviously, because I had to carry a really heavy backpack full of books and it honestly meant I was in excruciating pain all day long and I used to lie to my mother at the end of every day telling her I'd lost my bus money or spent it on something so she'd have to come and pick me up and I would be in such horrific pain that looking back I honestly have no idea how I coped and I don't think the people around me necessarily realised because it had been such a gradual build up of pain. My parents paid for me to see an osteopath every week for five years and it would feel absolutely amazing and be really helpful for maybe a day or two afterwards and I'd also be taller because my spine had straightened but it wasn't very long term and I spent a lot of time lying on the floor which does help my main back bit but is really painful for my right shoulder because it has a winged scapula, shoulder blade, which points like that way rather than to the side. And that's because all of my ribs have twisted to match my curve. So all the ribs at the top go this way and then all the ribs at the bottom go this way. So I have a little hump on my top right and on my bottom left. Because of the degree of my scoliosis was quite severe, it was suggested that I could have had surgery, but the doctors and my parents didn't think it was a very good idea because I already had quite weak health. It's a really big surgery. They cut open your back and put steel rods in, and I would have had to be on bed rest for six months, which, considering I then ended up on bed rest for two years in my late teens, I always feel we should have somehow coordinated. Unfortunately, as time went on, by the time I was able to make that decision myself, it was too late because all of my ribs had then become individually twisted, meaning that they would all have had to be broken in two places and then reset and then put metal rods in my spine. So, great. So, to break down my scoliosis and what it means, I got some x-rays taken. Was that specifically for this video or just to fill my own curiosity? We'll never know but they cost me money, so I'm monetizing this video. Although those are my boobs. We're gonna cover them up to keep YouTube happy. Perfect. I made my friend Candice, who can actually read x-rays, tell me what these really mean, so I'm just going to say her words out to you because they're fancy. The mispronunciation is obviously my own. So, this apparently shows a levocombex lumbar scoliosis, dextroconvex scoliosis, thoracic, yeah, meaning my lower spine curves to the left with my vertebra rotating to the right and my upper spine curves to the right with my vertebra rotating to the left. If you don't know, vertebra are the building blocks that make up your spine. You get a curve one way with the vertebra rotating on the opposite side via mechanics called coupled motion. Keeps you 
not balanced, I guess. You can measure the degree of a curve in the spine using a thing called the Cobb angle, which looks like this. It's confusing. I don't know how I can explain it. Because I have hypermobility, uh, my back can change quite a lot. If I spend a lot of time lying down, I will generally be taller and straighter. Ah, <sighs> not that straight though, obviously. <laughs> On the day of my x-rays though, my upper curve was a 33 degrees and my lower one was a 43 degrees. Whilst we're on the top x-ray, you can see that my jaw angles to the left when it's open. It's sort of grown that way because of the curve in my spine. Wonky jaws are linked to the neck and how a person holds their head, influencing the tone of their muscles around the top of your neck and your jaw. And I've suddenly realised I'm more than naked on the internet, um, which is an interesting experience, but hey, you could never say I'm not open with you. Back to the first x-ray. So, the right ilium rotated backwards, left forwards, which basically means the right side of my pelvis has dropped backwards, which apparently makes it look bigger on an x-ray, and the left is forwards, making it look smaller, but they are in fact the same size, and also I don't know how x-rays have just beaten the laws of perception, but anyway, physics of x-rays, they're distorted and different. Yeah, don't worry, it's just the picture. It doesn't hurt at all. This third x-ray shows my lower back from a different angle and you can kind of see how tilted it is as I seem to have two lines of my back but that's actually just because the right hand side is further forwards. So apparently I have an increased lumbar lordosis and it is normal to have a lordosis, that's the curve in your lower back, but when it's really increased, like mine is, your centre of gravity is kind of shifted forwards which is probably why I fall over all the time. Okay, it's one of many reasons why I fall over all the time. And finally, reversed normal lordosis in lower cervical spine, kyphosis C47. I don't know what these words mean. Look, I can't lie, I thought the cervical spine was going to be the part of the spine closer to my cervix, but no, it's actually my neck. Here's a normal neck for comparison. Apparently it is normal to have a curve or lordosis in the neck, just like in the lower back, but as you can see, the bottom part of my neck curves in the opposite direction, helpfully, which is called a kyphoid. So, sis. so this tiny curve is probably what gives me most of my headaches and pain, as there is a kind of abnormal mechanical loading through this part, which just adds to the pressure of the joints and the muscles there to keep my head up. Yeah. It is literally hard for me to keep my head on. Traditional medical management of scoliosis is really complex and is determined by the severity of the curve and also how old you are. Conventional options for children and teenagers are observation, bracing or surgery. I had x-rays every six months. Hi. I felt that. That was a... That was a tsunami of dog. I had an x-ray every six months as a teenager so they could kind of watch the curves develop, but I didn't have a back brace, which is weird because I would have happily worn one because Sarah Michelle Gellar worn one for her scoliosis and I would have done anything that Buffy thought was a good idea. Still would. Adult scoliosis treatment focuses mainly on relieving any pain and involves lots of painkillers if necessary, which it absolutely is. Fun fact, some humans may have developed scoliosis simply because they're humans. Scoliosis has not been found in chimpanzees or gorillas and thus it has been hypothesised that scoliosis may actually be related to humans' morphological differences from these apes. According to the fossil records, scoliosis may have been more prevalent among earlier hominids when bipediality was first emerging. Their fossils indicate that there may have been selection over time for a slight reduction in the lumbar length to what we see today, favouring a spine that could efficiently support bipediality but with a lower risk of scoliosis. Big bipedal! Had to have its drawback. So, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this tour around my body. Share your scoliosis stories with me in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you are new, and I shall see you in my next video. Mwah.